All right, we're back. I think we're back. That works for Spanish too. I like the word. No, I, I go through stages. At first I say, tutto bene, which is everything's good. And then I say, basta, which is stop. And then I say, tranquilo, which is chill the hell out. <laughs> this is when people are trying to feed me and get me fatter than I already am. I can't hear anything. I gotta turn this up. I don't know if that's, the mic is picking that up or not. You tell the pineapple story in eight minutes. Um, <laughs> yes, probably. I'll tell you the story instead. All right, so uh, Sunday night uh, was Jen's birthday. We hung out. Took, took her out to dinner. And we're out there getting dinner. And <laughs> no, I've not told Dami to hear the pineapple story. And it starts off easily. You hung out with your wife? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you? Well, not my wife. So we start off with some bruschetta. And that was okay. And then the antipasto comes out. And... Like, everybody gets a little bit of it. But for some reason, like, they expected me for me to eat half of it. So I ate almost all of the cheese, the figs, the salami, like, most of the olives. They're like, they're like eat it. I'm like, fine, whatever. So we get our main courses, and Jen, Jen's like, hey, maybe we could share some fries. So this is mine, that's like thinly cut beef with ham and mozzarella and some red sauce on top with some french fries. She doesn't really take any of the french fries, and that's fine, that's okay. And then my father-in-law is talking to the owner and she's got like these special things that she cooked just for the night. So she adds some of this homemade pasta and he's like, oh, let's try that. And let's try the special meat dish she made. And we'll, we'll all have a little bit. And that sounds okay. If you split this four ways, it's gonna be okay. So they get the pasta out and like the guy, I swear to God, takes one noodle. And then Jen and her mom look at me and they're like, oh no, we're not eating anything. Oh no, that's all you. So I gotta eat this entire second plate of pasta if I've already had that beef. And then not only that, there's this, which is like, it doesn't look like a lot, but like there's like two sausages and like some huge chunks of pork in there. And so like I do my job and I finish all of the pasta. So I'd already eaten all the other stuff and I already ate all of this. And so I'm on this and I get down to like the last piece of meat. And the owner comes over and I said, you know, in, in Italian as best as I could, it was very good, um, but I'm I'm full. I'd like to stop now. And she just like pats me on the back in a way that is an all not at all like oh you're done. And she says something. And then Jen looks at me and she says, she said if you just eat it slowly, you can finish it. Just eat, just eat slow. <laughs> Which I did. I did finish it. But like, I was just blasting farts <laughs> the whole way back.
Didn't get any help. Didn't get help from anyone. Left on my own. It wasn't like... So it wasn't like a true pineapple event afterwards, but the next day, like everybody's staying on the first floor and there's a second floor that nobody's really on at all. And there's like a private bedroom and a private bathroom. And I felt so relieved to be able to use a bathroom where nobody could hear what was going on in there. <laughs> like it was such a relief to just go full out. Like you ever, you ever been at a party before or something and like everyone's hanging out in a room and like the bathroom is like, just like, it's just like this little door between you and everyone else. And you have to be like, careful, like you don't want to fart too loud. But at the same time, if you just farted really loud, it would just be over. Ah, that's awful. I'm not doing an upper decker to my, to my family. Playing Guild Wars 2 today? I'm about to get sponsored by Guild Wars 2. When I get sponsored, make sure to, like, click it. Why does this thing, like, keep clicking off? I'm trying to check my, uh, my Discord messages. We're talking, uh, talking about the Twitch thing. Today's Steam release? Uh, soon? I don't know. I don't know the details. I've not gotten the, the briefing yet, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to do it. So click that link when you see it. And be like, oh yes, streamer SD Shepard totally influenced me. Mechanical keyboard? I, yeah, I have one. I like the way it sounds, but it would be probably pretty annoying for me to use it. Maybe we'll play together? All right, so here's the disappointing part. They're actually not going to pay me to play Guild Wars 2. I'm pretty sure they're specifically paying me to play Monster Hunter, but advertise Guild Wars 2. <laughs> I mean, I would have played it. You know, but they, they don't want me to play. They want me to play Monster Hunter. <laughs> Mind you, after my last Guild Wars sponsorship, Guild Wars 2 sponsorship, I went back and I downloaded Guild Wars 1 ready to fire it up and play the game. But that game does not look like the way I remember it. It does not look the same. I, I think I'd have to play Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Guild Wars 1 is not looking great. Not in 2022. It's aged for 17 years. That game is longer than probably some viewers. Older than some viewers in this channel. Gamescom time. I'm never really excited about Gamescom, right? Doesn't it normally suck? Like, I don't want to be, like, crapping on this, but... I mean, it's welcome to Gamescom opening night. Gamescom is like the European E3. Now, nah, Tokyo Game Show is okay. E3 is worse than Gamescom when it happens. How's the audio? I probably got to turn it up a little bit, right? Or is that okay? The creator of the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley. Jeff has got such a good racket now. Oh my god, hello everybody! How you doing? It is so great to have a live crowd with us here in Cologne, Germany for Game I am close to Cologne. I'm Jeff Keeley and I gotta say I am so excited to be here with you. We did this in 2019, live in person in Germany, and in the past two years... Those are some fancy shoes. What are you talking about, normal Angeles, shoes? And in 2020, 
the first show that my team did together live was that August, Gamescom, and we connected with all of you virtually. And the fact that we're back here in person, I don't want to ever take this for granted before. So uh, I guys, mean, Cologne is where Christian is. Christian's pro well, Christian's not there. Christian is currently in China. Well, I got to say, we have a lot of great stuff for you tonight. We have tons of world premieres. The entire industry has come together to showcase the future. He's talking for a big you. game. We've got games like Sonic Frontiers, The Callisto Protocol, Outlast Trials, Hogwarts Legacy, Gotham Knights, and a lot of surprises of things that we didn't talk about in advance. So we've got some good stuff for you tonight here at Gamescom. And I don't have too much faith for Sonic. Wait to get started. We've got two hours of stuff, so should we just get right to it? All right. I love the roar of a live crowd, and because we got a live crowd, we got to surprise you with some stuff tonight, too. So let's start things off with our first The new Bioshock premiere. game? It's a new world from oh, a System brand Shock 2 new remastered? team that has a bold vision. Let's check this out. <laughs> Horns coins. Those never got turned into an NFT, did they? We want the community to build this. We want it to be their world. We want them to tell their stories in their game. I think it's I'm going to be real with you guys. I can't hear anything. So. Where we're free to explore, to be creative. You just tell me what's going on in the chat. Can I turn it up a bit? Yeah. Absolutely. I think ultimately, like that's kind of been the big ambition is to create this kind of. I like, can turn it up for you. I can't hear it. That can be built out in every direction. <laughs> I think it's every day is a new discovery, and it's constantly growing. We've put a lot of focus, I think, on the current. I just see and what it concept means to trees. Digitally. This is more than a game. It's a labor of love. It's a labor of passion. The dream is. I've, I've got the. I've got headphones. The next generation of gamers, and I think that we've we've kind of captured. That. I just don't really want to put players them. will play a massive part in this. It's not going to be just our game. It's not going to be just what we decide to do with it. There's something in it that will. I could turn. I could turn it up. I just don't want to like. That you love to do. The really thrilling aspect of all this is that people are going to get to see what we're doing for the first time. I'm just so excited for people to see what we've been spending. They, they the last might be real. Years there might be real subtitles. And I'm excited to see how they feel about it. Even though they will have to wait just a little bit longer. Everywhere has become no. more than just a video game for us. And today, we're delighted to give you a peek behind the curtain at what we've been working on. If I put headphones on, it might. Actually, I don't know if it would mess anything up. Oh, I, I would have never expected this to be a racing game. Is this a racing game? Hot Wheels? What? Fortnite? as confused as we do. I'm going to find the headphones. There you go, everywhere, and I'm sure you've got a ton of questions, and joining me now from Builder Rocket Boy is Adam Whiting to hopefully answer some of those, because uh, we're a little confused, but we want to know a lot about this, so tell us uh, everywhere, what kind of game is this? What can you tell us, Adam? Well, firstly, can I just say it's really exciting to just be here and we've been looking forward to coming out of stealth mode and really delighted to start the conversation today here at Gamescom. Now I won't be able to reveal everything but what I can say is that really we're not trying to make a normal game. I think the scope and ambition of this project are quite unlike anything else. We want to build a whole new world for gamers and not just they a place to play, Second Life too. watch, share, create, hang out with your friends. And so trying much to make another VR show. Well, I got to say, uh, the end of the trailer, I think we all were taken aback by, whoa, change, change art style. This seems totally different. What, is that part of everywhere? What can you tell us? Well, Jeff, that's one Dirty of the many vibes? surprises we've got Th in these store are for my players. Travel I mean, we are passionate about making games and telling stories. But ultimately, we made everywhere to be a place where 
players can make their own experiences, be who they want to be and tell their own stories. But we're still passionate about making immersive and cinematic experiences that players can just get lost in and enjoy. I guess you could say we want people to have their cake and eat it, and everywhere is a place that can happen. All right, well, definitely a bold uh, vision for what you're doing here. Uh, the other question I'm sure we're all wondering is, we didn't see any date on the trailer, any sense of when we're going to get to play this thing? Where are you at in development? Well, I'm delighted to say that we aim to have everywhere in the hands of players in 2023, but we've got many more things to show and tell over the coming months. And we're really I can excited hear it now. for you to sign up on our website, everywhere.game. But really, today was just a sneak peek behind the curtain to see what the team has been so hard at work on. And we're it really reminds me a little bit of Blanco's of block party. As soon as possible. Amazing. Well, Adam, thank you for sharing the reveal here at Gamescom. It's awesome to have so many European studios on stage. And tonight, we've got a lot of European studios that are going to reveal their games uh, for the first time. And right now, we're going to move to another world premiere announcement. World premiere. This stinks. I mean, they paid a lot of money to be first in, in the show, you know? Oh, Funcom. I must not fear. They made Anarchy Online. Fear is the mind killer. Guys, I just want to tell you there's a dog howling outside, and everybody outside is howling fear along with the dog, the and it kind of owns. That brings total obliteration. I, I don't think it's going to be a Telltale game. Do you? I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. When the fear is gone, there will be nothing. I haven't seen the new movie yet. Only I will remain. I don't know why they bother showing, like, just CGI cutscenes. Like, why not in game? I do like the actor. Was it Timothy Chalamet? Isn't some like direct to Netflix movie that was actually pretty good? There is no gameplay. There's a beta though. Trust me, the fun is just beginning tonight. All right, how many of you out there are fans of PlayStation? <laughs> well, yeah, I like we've the got delay. A fun surprise for you. I said, PlayStation, what can we do for all the fans coming together here at Gamescom? And right now, I'm honored to share this global PlayStation announcement with you right here at Gamescom. <laughs> That's gonna be the uh, the VR headset thing, I think. The controller looks slightly different though. New controller? Like pro PS5 controller? Why are the buttons down there? Are there back buttons? If there's no back buttons, it's pointless. There you go. The DualSense Edge. It's a high performance, ultra customizable, wireless PlayStation 5 controller On designed back, by though? PlayStation. And you see there, you can have your own uh, custom control profiles, uh, customized to your play style. And if you guys want to learn more That's about the, the brand new controller, you can head to PlayStation Blog. And thanks to PlayStation for sharing that announcement with us here at Gamescom. All right, next up, the Callisto Protocol. You guys hyped for that game? Thank you. Well, joining me now is Glenn Schofield from Striking Distance. Uh, Glenn, we are so excited about this game coming out in December. You came all the uh, way over in the middle jacket of development makes of the Gamescom. Look so we really wide. appreciate it. Uh, how has the response been to Callisto so far? Man, Jeff, the uh, response has been fantastic uh, for a new IP. I couldn't ask for anything more. 
Uh, so the bottom bonds not friends. Yes, and, maybe uh, for tweaking. I, I want to thank my team for uh, just really killing it, and it's great to be back at Gamescom, man. You know. Well, you got some good that's stuff my, for the that's fans. That's actually my and body we're shape, get to that guys. In a second, um, if I put on 50 you brought pounds, some game I would play. Exactly we saw the some same. great stuff at Summer Game Fest. You brought more. Now, what are we going to see today, Glenn? Yeah, you've got uh, some uh, live gameplay. Uh, we've got two sections. The first one is going to show some uh, some crazy combat, and uh, the second one is uh, something new uh, from the game, a little different than what we showed <laughs> with a uh, pretty crazy ending. Yeah. Yes, it is. You guys are going to love this. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about was you're known certainly in the team for your work on Dead Space. In that game, we love the strategic dismemberment. I understand you're kind of one-upping things for this game? Well, we got dismemberment, and we've shown the gore <laughs> system. Um, and today, we're going to show a couple new things, uh, including one that we're showcasing called mutations. So uh, the enemies may sometimes have these tentacles that come out. And if you don't shoot them, take them out on time, uh, this guy in real time is going to mutate in front of you into something bigger, badder, faster, meaner, and he's going to be taking you out. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Well, this is one of my most I anticipated a, games. A, it's a coming out this December. Glenn, thanks game. to you and the team for putting this together. Let's take a look at brand new gameplay from the Callisto Protocol. Thank you. It's like a spiritual successor to Dead Space. You just have a gravity gun, which seems kind of like cheating. I mean, why not just use the gravity or the whatever it is done on everything, the control gun. and he just put him in the grinder. He killed everyone with the grinder, basically. Pressure check complete. Releasing gate now. Releasing gate now. like a Mario 64 slide. Now you gotta go down the poop slide again. That doesn't make me really wanna play the game though. Does that make you wanna play the game? Not really. All right, that was pretty good, right? 
We got lots more coming for you, but right now I want to introduce my co-host for ONL, Melly. Melly, welcome to ONL. Thanks, Jeff. I'm so excited to be here at Gamescom. Hello, everybody. I'm your guide for tonight for all the happenings around Gamescom, and I'm really, really excited to be here because the heart of gaming is beating once again, and game devs and publishers from all around the world are making their way to Cologne to show you hundreds of new games. So if, you, if you're not here yet and still can come by, make sure to drop by, and if you can't, make sure to, ma uh, to drop by next year because it is definitely worth a visit. And one of the highlights we have this year is we actually have the largest in the area ever bringing visitors and devs closer together than everywhere, anywhere else in the world. I and uh, you can meet the makers of the most right original now. and fantastic and creative games here. And if you're not here, and if you can't make it here, do not worry. You can also check out the Indie Arena booth online at gamescom.global. Jeff, it's back to you. Thank you, Mally, and you'll be with us fun. all night. We've got Do Gamescom like awards games? to come and other things, too. But let's get right back to the world premieres. This next one is one you've been waiting for for a long time to see. Let's take a look at this brand new world premiere. After an age of the cruelest tyranny, man finally defeated its overlord. But gods do not fall forever. The champions of war united and began the eternal watch I have no over idea. their tyrant's colossal remains. For some forces, even death cannot end. The <laughs> Lords of the Fallen too? Oh my God, could you imagine? Now, eons later, the fallen god's influence pervades the world again, corrupting even sworn enemies. Join his accursed lords of the fallen and damn humanity to a new age. Wasn't it of really bad though? Though from these darkest days, new heroes arise. To defy the gods, one must embrace the darkness. And so lies our only hope. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Wait. DMCA. Don't. Don't. I got to mute it. Got. Nobody watching this even knows who Danzig is. Mother! You won't make hell with me. I could show you what it's like. Mother! He just died. Everyone clap. I don't like him dying. Oh god damn it. <laughs> Is it is it by the same people that made the last one? That's you, right. you still want to be careful, the, uh, the, the Lords of the Fallen. Uh, all right, now it's time for another new game announcement. The sequel to a game that redefined the term couch co-op. Check this out. Goldeneye? Are you struggling? Missing your regular FARTs? Have you tried going online? Visit exotic destinations. Move your dreams, whoever you are. Apply today. No skills? No worries. This is about farts and couch co -op. You're hired. 
open a door of new opportunities. We were talking about Golden Age earlier, okay? Work alone? What did you or miss? with a friend. Or two. Or more. You can do it. Callista Protocol, I guess? Or connect together online. Yeah! Nice one. Coming 2023. Oh, I, I signed up for a sponsorship for this game once. The first one. And it was so bad, I had to tell them that actually I couldn't do the sponsorship. I'm pretty sure that happened. <laughs> there was no yes, game. It's time to step into the Potterverse. You guys excited for Hogwarts Legacy? Well, it is coming out in February of 2023, and tonight at Gamescom, we've got the brand new trailer for you to take a look at. I don't want to say much and spoil much. This is an incredible trailer. I hope you enjoy it. The more we know about Salazar Slytherin, and you the know dark who hearts, used to work for Team 17, John? If I uses dark magic, watch your mouth. I will notify the headmaster immediately. Unforgivable curses are so named for a reason. A spell that could save your life shouldn't be unforgivable. The dark arts seem harmless until it's too late. None of us will be able to avoid dark magic forever. What do we do now? It's up to us. I can teach you Crucio, or I can cast it on you. What does Crucio do? I'm, I'm ready. ready. Crucio! What? You've made your choice. They make zombies? Is this the pain curse? They used it on Jesus? That's kind of a dick move. Oh. I mean, unforgivable. I mean, it doesn't kill them. What have the two of you done? I hate this early access garbage with the pre-order stuff. They got me with the freaking Strangers of Paradise thing. That's right, it's time to step into the world of Borderlands now. Joining me is the founder of Gearbox Entertainment Company, Randy Pitchford. Randy, great to see you here. Thanks for the intro, uh, Jeff. I think a lot of these guys probably know me from my work at Gearbox creating Borderlands. Any Borderlands fans in the house? Well, I got good news. I know uh, some of you hardcore folks saw the leak, uh, but I'm here to officially announce new Tales from the Borderlands. So, tell us about this. We remember Tales confused. from the Borderlands. This is new Tales from the Borderlands. This, this is new is, characters, new story. It is. You know, I loved the original game, and so that's why we got some of the original storytellers and writers that were back in the day at Telltale yeah. and developed an all-new storyline with all-new characters uh, created uh, uh, with uh, production from Gearbox Studio Quebec, uh, it's an all-new experience, and uh, we're here to show it for the first time today. You guys want to check it out? Let's do it. It's coming soon, too, right? That's right. Uh, coming in October of this year. October okay. of this year, all platforms. Awesome. Well, let's take a look, Randy. This is exciting. New Tales from the Borderlands, first at Gamescom. Isn't Randy a bad guy? There's a number of Most people. He's controversial. The Borderlands start I don't know much about him, but I know there's controversy. They end bloody, too. Sometimes, all it takes to change the galaxy is a trio of losers trying to get through a bad day. We are in the middle of a TDR invasion. Leave immediately! This area is now under TDR jurisdiction! They think there was a vault key being kept on the station. If we can find whatever's in that vault before TDR does, we can change our lives! Does Fran have a weapon she uses? We're bad at this. Like, really bad. Tidio has many guns. Talking guns. 
Guns with legs. I'm gonna blast you so freaking fast. Yeah. Shut up, Richard. <laughs> Ain't nobody stopping me. I always wanted to change the universe for the better. And now we actually can. But more importantly, we'll be drowning in... Are you people like this? <laughs> well, one character is insufferable. I actually like Fran the most. If you happen to see any corpses along the way, uh, don't worry about them. They're just, uh, yeah, don't worry about them. That'll Come be a Game Pass game. City and you don't have to worry about that. Or Humble Bundle. Season. I'm gonna tell you a story about a species that survived millennia. Homo neanderthalensis, Homo rhodesiensis, Homo erectus, all of them wiped out by the deadliest species of all, us. I am Astrid. This is the new arena. And my advice for you, stay alive. This uh, Dying Light 2 DLC? Yeah, it's Dying Light 2 DLC. Okay. Every day you fight for survival, but today you fight for. That game was annoying because it had like a two hour Anyone long tutorial, so by the time you got out of the tutorial, you couldn't refund it on Steam. Of a champion. Red Bull gives you wings. Dying Light was a zombie game, and Dying Light 2 came so out. So you want to join me? Like June or something? I don't know. January? Not June. It's like January. Pirates is pretty cool. No, it's all right. This is the best thing we've seen yet. And be a part of my crew. Food is low. It's the best game they've shown Product yet. Not yet rated. One hundred percent. Team Seventeen. I, the rate. Maybe don't lead with raid. When they see this glorious end, they will come for us. I've seen Black Myths on Wukong. I've seen uh, messages from the developer saying that they don't want or need female gamers. I've seen that. Let them come and see. It's kind of messed up. He said a lot of crazy stuff like his. What they do then. He needs his boner to be serviced and stuff. This game needed no female players. 
And that is game. Some things are only made for men. Hello again. This Saturday, the Gamescom Awards will be handed out to the winners of the best games on the show floor. I'm just going to copy submitted and paste games it. Showing at Gamescom will be eligible to be nominated. There and the go. awards will be streamed on all Gamescom channels, so make sure to tune in. But tonight, I'm allowed to hand out four awards. I'm very, very excited about that. And I would say, let's jump straight into it, starting with the most wanted PC game. Here are your nominees. Metal Hellsinger. What? System Shock. That? Black Myth Wukong developer? I don't know, man. Just look it up Warhammer yourself. Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. And the winner is Metal Health Singer. And here to accept the award is Sheila Vickstrom, executive <laughs> that was so producer fast. at The Outsiders. The stage is yours. <laughs> How long was she standing there for? Thank you so much. Wow, this is a lot of people. Uh, I was practicing my speech a lot, but of course, you know, when it's um, as much people as there is right now, you'll blank. Um, but I want to say that I am honored to receive this award on behalf of my team. The team behind Metal is an am amazing bunch of people that I'm so lucky to be working with every day. And the truth is, making games is super hard. When I started out, I Mr. don't Director think I really says, realized I know, how hard. And what I learned is that focusing on compassion, kindness, and empathy just as much as any other craft in games would be the key to successful game development. And it's precisely those qualities that my team possess and why I'm so privileged to be working with them every day. I love you guys at home. I miss you so much. So what I want to say to you, my industry friends and colleagues, is treat each other with heart, kindness, and respect every day. Make games with humanity. Thank you so much. Congratulations once again. And Jeff, back to you. Thank you, Mally. Well, the world premiere train keeps going. It's time to move to the world of Sonic. Any Sonic Hedgehog fans out there? <laughs> Sonic has had a pretty good is year Sonic with the, the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic like 2 the movie, which was a ton of fun earlier this year. Well, Sonic community. Frontiers is in development, and we've got in a existence. brand new trailer for you and confirmation of the release date, too. Check this out. Is it good? I hope it's good. I hope they make a good game. Submit. <laughs> actions endanger the world. That looks okay. Well, maybe not. That part. This part, no. Oh my god, it is New Genesis with Sonic. I mean, they had to do something with the engine, right? You cannot run forever. Leave. Immediately. It's totally, you're right, it's totally New Genesis, but Sonic. They're like, we made this engine, we gotta use it for something. There you go, it is coming this year, Sonic Frontiers. All right, well now, another European studio wanted to use Gamescom o l as a platform to announce another narrative experience. This comes from a French studio. Check this out. French studio, what French studio? He didn't say it. We leave so many things behind us. Objects. 
It's not Bioshock. Memories. I'm sorry. Mistakes. It's not. It's not even Subnautica. They sink in time. Touch the bottom and go to sleep. They Silence just said it was a narrative game. Full of ghosts. I'm assuming it's a walking simulator. And here, voices can only come from the deep. Deep under the waves. Cat trying to get a. I thought I heard Guys, something. it's time for the goats. Ready for some goats? No live goats today, but we are <laughs> here to talk about Goat Simulator 3. We got to announce this back at Summer Game Fest. And now it's time to see the gameplay of Goat Simulator 3 for the first time. Let's check this one out. Chicho could live forever in the game. I just can't believe this gets a third game. Oh, is this the MCA? All right, hold on. Didn't they say Goat Simulator 3? They skipped two. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying that, like, random ragdolls aren't funny anymore, but, like, I feel like you got to do more. Oh, it looks like there's, like, some story things going on. I guess that's something. I mean, November it looks like they put an actual, that has literally like, game about everything behind Everything you it, could imagine in it. Uh, Goat Simulator 3. All right. A lot of people ask me how I got started in the industry. And what I loved doing when I was a kid with my brother, we would play PC adventure games. And I grew up playing classic LucasArts and Sierra adventure games. Do you guys remember Monkey Simulator Island, too. by chance? Well, I am so excited because there is a new Monkey Island in development right now. Ron Gilbert, the series creator, is back. You may have heard about it. Return to Monkey Island, and tonight at Gamescom, I am so excited that we get to announce the release date, or actually, I don't. We get to go to Stan to tell us the release date. Check this out. People are freaking out about the art style for some reason. I don't know why. Boomers? Hello, friends. It's your old pal Stan, coming to you through the magic of marketing to let you know that your search for quality entertainment is I about think it looks to bear fruit. But I wouldn't be doing my job if I just dropped the details on you without a little build-up. I want you to see the kind of fine dining establishments you'll be visiting, like this one. Get lost. And if escapism is your cup of flavor, you can't do much better than this exotic and extremely remote island. Stay back! How did you find me? Return to Monkey Island launches September 19th, which happens to be International Talk Like a Pirate Day. But you don't have to wait. You can order it right now. Before they say it's it has out. modern adjustments. Something we in the marketing industry call a pre-order. As a bonus, I'm ready to unload this shipment of beautiful horse armor to anyone who pre-orders Return to Monkey Island. It'll look fantastic in your inventory. Oi, you missed a spot. I've got to go now. I've got a lot of irons and a lot of fires. You know how it is. But I'll be back to steal every scene I'm in in Return to Monkey Island. I'll see you there. Uh, it's funny. All pre-order customers will receive the exclusive horse armor item in their inventory. Please note that the horse armor has no practical use in game and in no way will contribute to the gameplay puzzles or narrative of Return to Monkey Island. Oh my God. 
a month away, and I love the horse armor. Does absolutely nothing. It just sits in your inventory. Return to Mike Alley. Cannot wait. Don't for upset that. Bethesda, All right, now, Jeff. Let's turn to the world of unknown worlds. The creators of Subnautica. They signed your paycheck. As we tease, they are here today at Gamescom to unveil a brand new IP, and it's a departure from Subnautica. It's a brand new turn-based sci-fi game, and uh, we're going to reveal it for the first huh. time right here. Actually, special guest is. Let's check this out. That sounds interesting. Subnautica was a good game. Hi, I'm Brandon Sanderson. You might know me as the author of the Mistborn series, the Stormlight Archive, or as the guy who finished Robert Jordan's loves him. Wheel of Time. Over the last few years, I've been working closely with my friends at Unknown Worlds on the exciting project we're revealing today. You, of course, know Unknown Worlds for creating immersive and fantastical worlds like the incredible Subnautica series. When they reached out to me, I was absolutely thrilled to help craft the expansive sci-fi universe in which their next game is set. This secret has been a hard one to keep, and we're so excited to finally show you what we've created together. So, without further ado, this is Moonbreak. Does he have a YouTube solo bootsy? Let us keep this I'll have to check him out. Welcome to the party. With you till the end. Different for sure. Grenades, anyone? They'll never see this coming. I taste their panic. Oh, no. oh. Good day. Stop this treachery. Come on. Almost like the D and D board games that used to exist or still maybe do. Oh, wow. Oh, people. There's a certain crowd of people that are going to cream their jorts over this. Said many ways to play. What does that mean? Join me from Unknown Worlds and Charlie Cleaver, I'm Charlie worried, man. It's real and it's so different than Subnautica. So yes, concerning this departure. Uh, you guys like to kind of reinvent yourselves every game, right? Yeah. So people thought we were kind of crazy for making Subnautica after making Natural Selection. We went from a strategy shooter to a pacifist underwater game, survival. Uh, so I feel like we've done this before. We you know, we love changing genres, but I'm hoping, you know, our Subnautica fans will still come along for playing a digital miniatures game. I hope. Well, it's so cool. A digital miniatures game. Uh, everyone loves miniatures, but how do you translate that into gameplay? What is the gameplay of this game? So uh, we're kind of channeling like a Guardians of the Galaxy or Firefly kind of feel. So you can see that from the colorful art style we have. Um, so you choose a captain and 10 crew and you build a roster, kind of like a traditional miniatures game. And every unit in the game is really like strange and special and kind of game breaking. So um, yeah, you deploy units and you move them around on the battlefield and you get all these crazy game changing powers, kind of like Hearthstone meets XCOM, kind of. Well, I, I love, I mean, you see the gameplay here, it looks great and uh, it's As long as it's not NFTs. Said, uh, in September, so you're not early access, you're not going to wait long. But the thing I want to get to is the painting, painting of miniatures, which we saw a tease of in the trailer. And I know you actually, Painting was cathartic for you sort of during the, the pandemic, right? Yeah, so the painting, I mean, you can't have a miniatures game without painting. And during the lockdown, I just found myself like learning to draw and just like just zoning out and feeling re really relaxed when the world was basically falling apart around us. And we really tried to capture that feeling. It, it's not like Photoshop or like special technical tools or anything like that. You, we just simulate washes, dry brushing. We've got decals. Um, 
This it looks like really easy to do, but like if you want to really get into it, it doesn't seem that hard. By it. Like all the miniatures you see painted in the game are all painted with the tool. Wow. So it's like actually pretty powerful. Amazing. Well, it's so cool that uh, you're revealing it here and it's going to it's playable at Gamescom, right? It is. It's here. You guys are the first ones to play it. Wow. And uh, oh yeah, it's more <laughs> <laughs> We're over in the Crafton booth. Okay. Crafton booth. And for everyone else around the world, they're not yes. going to wait long, right? Yes, we'll be on Steam Playtest in September. Yep. We have a couple open weekends, and then we're going to be launching um, into Steam Early Access September 29th. So it's wow. really close. Only a month away, Moonbreaker Charlie. Thank you so much as for coming. As long as there's no the NFTs, it'll be you. okay. I, I, I'm assuming you're going to have to buy you, the everyone. units. All right, Charlie Cleveland, the Unknown Worlds. Thank you so much, Charlie. But if it's like forty or and fifty dollars, now it's time to reveal another game okay, with a very catchy tune in the trailer. Check this out. No, <laughs> no catchy tunes. Let me tell you about the friends that invested all they had on a shady site that looked like a scam. It said buy this magic cards to play the coolest game and fight against your friends with no consequence. <laughs> I do like the high color contrast things that are being shown. First-person shooter card games. Inspired by the familiar story of Pinocchio, Lies of P is a new action Souls-like game that is coming out from Neil Wiz, and you guide Pinocchio on his unrelenting journey to become human. This game looks absolutely great, and we've oh, got a brand new gameplay trailer I've to show seen you. I've this. And this game is also coming to Xbox Game Pass Interesting. On day one. Let's check it out. Weird looking game. Game Pass Day 1, by the way. Can you hear me? I hope this reaches you. This city is falling apart. Chaos. Madness. You can change that. Is that Pinocchio? It depends on the choice you make. <laughs> he doesn't have a big nose. Or lie. in the darkest of times. All right, buddy, I'm here for you. Don't worry. Don't give up. Keep up. You are Pinocchio. Protect. Fulfill. Oh, 
looks great. It looks very fun. Your destiny. Pancho Roca, what? <laughs> hey, you! Hmm? Yes, you! Do you have fun? Fear of missing Gamescom. Relax. Gamescom is everywhere you want. Gamescom now. Register now. That's right. All the fun of Gamescom is available from wherever you are online, obviously. And, well, in case you're wondering who that little guy is, that's Epi, and he's on a mission to save the games converse from the evil future. And if you want to help him, check out the Epic section at gamescom.global. You can solve quests and win prizes, so take part and help Epi to save the games converse. But first, I want to tell you more about uh, some of the great program we have for this week. And it's quite a schedule, so please bear with me. There is, for example, the Gamescom Studio by IGN, featuring game spotlights, deaf interviews, and all insights into this year's Gamescom, so please make sure to check that out so you don't miss anything. And also, the it's awesome not like indie showcase is instant back, Brian. featuring the newest, most original, her, crazy her indie games here on Friday afternoon at 5.30 p.m. CEST, and I'm really looking forward to it. And something I'm really looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to is, uh, is, is, the, is the cosplay contest on Sunday, where the super creative cosplay community takes center stage. And this is absolutely one of my favorites. So make sure to that not actually might miss be kind it out. Of fun. It is definitely worth the watch. And for more updates, follow at Gamescom on all platforms. And well, she's talking in front of a big crowd. Give her a break. It's time to introduce our next guest, but sadly, she couldn't make it since she's a tad far away. So let's see. She sent us a video, and I would say, let's have a look. Hello, Gamescom. I'm ESA <laughs> astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, currently flying at around 27,000 kilometers an hour, 400 kilometers her hair is above so cool. your head on board of the International Space Station. Today, I come to you to say bravo to the games industry. We see how many space games you've been creating recently. Those missions you send your players on aren't just great fun. They create curiosity, interest, and the love of space exploration in gamers around the world. As we look towards returning to the moon and on to Mars with our ambitious Terra Nova program, humanity's spaceflight capabilities will be in part thanks yeah, she's about to go industry. Super Saiyan, yeah. And who knows? Perhaps even you will be among us here at ESA for the journey. Did she Exploring say... Exploring space virtually among us? great fun. It's having real-world impacts that lead us all closer to the stars. So on behalf of everyone at ESA, bravo. Keep creating, keep innovating, and keep playing. This is ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti wishing everyone a wonderful Gamescom from the International Space Station. <laughs> She's been practicing that. <laughs> Just waiting for the chance to, to pull that out. After eating the horse. How's it going so far? Um, there's been some stuff that's been mildly interesting. It hasn't been a complete waste. It wasn't as good as uh, Summer Game Show this year. Another open world crafting simulator? Any Monster News? You d don't expect Monster News at this conference.
Camarillo. <laughs> Camarillo, man, it's looking pretty good. I mean, I wish them luck. I do wish them luck. When we were looking at games for Gamescom Opening Night Live, uh, one of the things I was most impressed with this year is there are a lot of European studios that want to debut games RTS, here. It's not an RTS. And also a lot of brand new IP, brand new game. worlds. And we're going to introduce one of those to you right now. And I think you're going to get pretty excited about it. Check out this world premiere. Same guy in the Summer the Game Fest. Yeah, Jeff Keighley. You're not going to get Dragma Tuners. When gods walked this world, and our heroes stood amongst them. But the gods' vanity grew, and in their struggle, we were cast away. Only remnants of Is that these Black Desert remain. game? In the sand. The Crimson Sand game or whatever. In the it is. ruins of this shattered, broken world. Crimson Desert, thank you. strong enough to lift the bridge couldn't you just like move the wagon over It's gotta be that game. I don't know, maybe it's something else, but. <laughs> Even just, uh, in the ruins, we endure. We won't let go. For now, we can stand for ourselves. And face. Yo, yeah, that's a big X. Ah, it's complete. I, have we seen that? This is new. Yeah. Looks neat. Atlas Fallen coming in 2023. Now, a classic strategy game that I remember playing in the late 90s is Homeworld. Did anyone else play that back in the day? Yeah. Great PC space RTS. Well, a brand new Homeworld is coming out next year, uh, and we've got a brand new look at some new gameplay from Homeworld. Let's check it out. I love the way those little, those little ships move around. I love it. Now, what do you know? You don't know anything. It was a simple perimeter scan, escorting resources. But we were ambushed by Kalan raiders. Fighters were no problem, but the missile frigates were a different story. The command got clever. One wing used cover to keep themselves safe on approach. found a tunnel in the structure to sneak behind them. We're on the run top with the bridge. There, there, there's a call-in strategy. It worked. Just before a carrier... I'd be happy to do a sponsorship for Homeworld 3. Are you kidding me? We scrambled bombers. Scanning zone adjusted. Perfect for attacking capital ships. This is bomber lead. Engaging 
carrier. We protected the resourcers while they hauled in the goods, which meant we could roll out assault. But these aren't the games I get sponsorships for. I get. The Raiders weren't pushovers. I get. I get a tier or two below this game. The way their carrier exploded. No, I could definitely handle this game. And we even grabbed a little souvenir. That missile frigate is ours now. Oh, I didn't get sponsored to play Exo Primal. I just got into the beta test. Home yeah, you can always steal the enemy. The first half uh, of ships. 2023. Now, today is a big day, speaking of threes, because it's the version 3.0 update to Genshin Atlas Impact, Fallen? Uh, which is an incredible action RPG from Hoyoverse. Well, today we've got an exclusive new look at version 3.0 and the new Rainforest Nation, as well as a sneak peek of a mysterious ancient civilization and settlement that is found deep inside the desert. Let's take a look at this world premiere. I should probably get my save on a PC at some point because... I do get periodic sponsorship offers, and I I just don't want to hook up my PlayStation. I don't even have it with me, so. It's a fine game if you don't spend money on it. It's still an okay game if you spend a tiny amount of money on it. Don't go crazy. Don't do what Noxella does. <laughs> Can't see. <laughs> I'll uproot you. Get out. <laughs> Go. I mean, I'll say they, they do have cute character designs. I don't know how much Noxel spend, but I think he spent a lot. It's boring. Um, it's more about filling out a checklist than a challenging combat. If that makes any sense. I accept responsibility for not doing it. Oh, is it only on Epic? Oh, that must make people mad too. <laughs> What an absolutely beautiful game. And that's not all from Hoyoverse, because they also have Honkai Star Rail in development. It's a grand interstellar adventure with strategic turn-based combat. And now we're going to take a new look at the story and adventure that awaits you in Honkai Star Rail. Did uh, Kanta enjoy this or no? Is this the one he plays? I don't know if this is the one he plays or not. He plays Honkai Impact, right? What do I think? I mean, it may, yes. My guess is yes, he does. <laughs> of five people, three must pay a price. You are not one of them, Jin Yuan. <laughs> Shencho is in danger. This man, he... The train is about to make the jump. Hold on, everyone. Hello again! It is now time for our next Gamescom Award, and here are your nominees for the most wanted Microsoft Xbox game. <laughs> Yay! Xbox! The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me. 
The last case of Benedict Fox. Manuel Helsinger. They already won one. They can't win another one. And the winner is the last case of Benedict Fox. And here to accept He's already the there. is Bartek Leszczykowski, creative director at Plot Twist. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. It's uh, quite of a shocker for us. Uh, we just love uh, good Metroidvania games, and uh, we are working hard on uh, making Benedict Fox just that. And I would like to thank uh, Xbox team uh, for their support and uh, Rogue team for being the best publisher ever. And especially I would like to thank my team uh, in Krakow. They are crazy talented and uh, my hands hold the award, but uh, their hands make the game. Dziękuję wam bardzo. Thank you. Congratulations once Good again job, the guy. last case of Benedict Fox. And Jeff, back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Melly. Uh, Anyone here a fan of Justin Roiland? Rick and Morty? <laughs> well, he's got a brand new game, which you may have seen at Xbox's show in June, called High on Life. It is coming to Xbox and Game Pass just say in December. Rick and Morty. And they wanted to send us just a great gameplay clip. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, talking guns in a boss fight. And that's all I'm going to say to set this up. I think you're going to really... This is a trip. Check this out. World premiere of High We've on Life. We've seen this. This looks okay. It looks funny. I don't know about this combat. We're, we're, we're hurting you. No. Fuck you. They're just like standing in like a, a square box. Jesus, it's so gross you even went in there. I like the, the, the mid-air stuff, I guess, is okay. Deflect attacks. Did you know that? It's not just all about stabbing. Well, I'm mostly all about stabbing and, and tethering, but I can also deflect attacks. I'll slice in the fucking dirt. I'll cut their fucking heads off. I'll fucking I'll rip their limbs. I'll fucking do everything. Oh, I'm gonna fucking cut right into them. I'll cut their fucking asshole off and eat it. You know, this sludge <laughs> matches your toxic personality. Fuck off. That wasn't even a good one. First boss, I guess. So maybe, maybe don't have too high of a. I'm impressed you made it this far. My ant soldiers are extremely strong. Honestly, I don't think they were. We're new at this, and it was pretty easy to kill them all. If I'm going out, I'm taking you with me. Sh just stay alive. I think she's basically done for. Well, it seemed very um, interesting until they showed that. <laughs> that that makes it look worse. Uh, do you see that? What? When? Hmm. Hmm. What is it? Wait. What are you? Dude, don't eat that. Come on, dude. Dude. You know she's gonna eat it. What? Yep. No! No! 
Told you. Gross. This is um, the Zuck's dream. <laughs> I just saw Blood Hunt. We got sponsored by them guys. Let's hope for a double. Show for bad video games. There's some okay games here. Meta redesigned his avatar to make it seem less lifeless. It didn't help. No, I haven't really played GTFO in a long time, but the game's pretty cool. I'm glad I bought it. I probably should try it again. I think PUBG is mostly a mobile from game. Among thousands of candidates. Hey, Cutter. To join the Lynx family. You're from Earth, right? This is more than just a job. It's an opportunity. You ever miss it? Caution. Oh, shit, oh, shit. Lynx. Making the world a better place. It's the Hole Breaker game? What they the say game? about work in space is true. There's something real special here. Are you saying that the you narrative is worse than the here. gameplay? You never will. Look around you. We're expendable. I can, I can hear them in the walls. They ain't a tray lacking. Dancing between the ribs of a ship. Gaze out at the rest of the human race. Buzzing in the distance. That's when the sky fills up with flames. Oh, it's been out. I, I think it's popular. Things go. I think it's on Game Pass. It's been out. You could play it. Game Pass time. Oh yeah. Fill me up with games. I think that Immortals Phoenix Rising game, people actually enjoyed that one. You gotta help me rescue my friends. Bring it together now. Bring it together now. Slime so Rancher actually had issues on the Xbox. It did not run well at all. So hopefully the second one is better. And if, it is, if you're still there, they released, um... Battle Spire on PC Game Pass. <laughs> Battle Spire and Red Guard? First announced back at the Game Awards, Telltale's next project is based on the Prime video series The Expanse. Well, we showed you a little bit of the trailer at the Game Awards to set up the world. Now you're going to get a first glimpse at the gameplay with this behind the scenes clip. Enjoy. Drummer, his suit is punctured and losing pressure. You need to release the vault and pass it now or he could die. Hold still. We'll see what we can do. Captain Drummer, what are your orders? Kill them. The Expanse is obviously one of those universes that has a ton of opportunities. Shoot them all out the airlines. 
One of the things I'm super excited about is the zero G stuff that we've been doing. A big part of when we're making the game, not only are we thinking about the characters, we also have to think about how can we evolve the genre in any way that will make players excited to be part of this universe and feel like they're engaging in something rather than zooming just being in a on spandex butts. Member. You'll figure something. I know what you're doing. I know you will. It's actually been a really interesting thing as an actor to explore some of her more vulnerable sides that by the time we meet her in the series, they've been cauterized. <laughs> because this score, Drummer, this is the greatest score any scavenger has ever come across. You'll need me if you want any chance of unloading it. Seems like you're the one to get unloaded. The craziness of an uh, exploded ship that now constitutes several parts in a mass, and you can move them on. And balancing that out against almost like you're excavating a story, that's a personal story. Those are people, those are characters, and you are now among the ghosts, whatever they were doing right Yeah, I mean, I died. agree with you, Solo Bootsy. Sometimes all you want dark job. is the character you like engaging in, in, with we're new really people or new scenarios, how it feels right? To both play and experience the story in the game. You don't have to change anything. Whoever did this is long gone, and we still have a ship that's ready to be scavenged. So get to it. Speaking of adapting things from one medium to another, here's a film adaptation that uh, into a game, which I don't think you would have ever expected. Check this out. <laughs> I think it's Breaking Bad. <laughs> Zoomers just must think this is the lamest thing ever. Why would you open the door? This movie scared me when I was a kid. This scared me. I was scared by both goats, probably. killer clowns. We got it all tonight at opening night live. Uh, now we've got another brand new game announcement from a European publisher for a sci-fi action adventure. It wasn't corny. It was scary, man. These clowns were terrifying. We always wondered if we're alone in the universe. We observed and explored, but found nothing. Until now. Scary for my child. Yeah, kids get scared of things. It's been six months since the alien object known as the metahedron suddenly I don't want to get turned into cotton candy. Fear. That's scary. You, you're dead if you get turned into cotton candy. Personal log, sentient contact assessment and response team. Kate? Oh, well, he was yeah, awful! Thank you. Hey, this game looks okay. I, we're still talking about the clowns. Though. What happened? Power supply failing! Scorn should be out Sensors soon, or Radish. I'm switching to backup generators. Am I in a shed now? I'm in Italy. I would play this on Game Pass. If it's on Game Pass, I would possibly play it. 
Now we're going to talk about Gamescom Goes Green, not which is an initiative house. that has I'm made with Gamescom family. the first climate-friendly gaming event in the world. It's not a the summer home. I'm with this family. Show, now. Opening night live. I'm happy to say are 100 percent climate neutral for the first time, and that's something we all should be very proud of. You guys are part of that too. Now, as part of this initiative, Gamescom, along with the United Nations Environmental Pro Program Initiative, Playing for the Planet are going to give out the first ever Gamescom Goes Green Award to the best sustainability concept from an exhibitor here at Gamescom. And the nominees are Microsoft, Xbox, Yuki, and the Indie Arena booth. And to find out the winner, let's turn it over to Melly. Thank what? you, thank you, Jeff. And yes, the They're winner of this year's Gamescom Goes Green Award is Yuki. And here to accept the award is Dr. Joe Twist, CEO of Yuki. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gamescom, for What's this wonderful Yuki? award. It's brilliant to be recognized. Thank what? you to the Yuki team who works so hard every day to be greener. Uh, uh, and thank you to the UN's Playing for the Planet Alliance for inspiring us to change. You know, it's so fantastic to see these amazing game worlds that we're going to play in over the next year. But you know, we only have one planet to live on. Trade body for UK games. And we only have UK one games. lifetime to make a change and to protect that planet so that we can continue to play our games. So everybody, whether you're a player or a business, can make one small change starting tomorrow and together it's a trade association we can for play video more games. games together and save the planet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, and congratulations once again to Yuki. And remember, it is not only the organizers or exhibitors that can go green. All of you can also make a change by donating to the Gamescom Forest. Wait, wait, so you think that's your not Gamescom true. tree today. Jeff, back to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Melly. Congratulations to of Yuki. Of course it would help. Uh, now it's time to announce a brand new game from a new studio of industry veterans working on an it's ambitious mostly... new RPG. Here's the first tease. Uh, and people are going to laugh. It's mostly highways are the problem. It's, it's, it's how much car travel there is. I mean, it's mostly too late. If, if the argument's from that perspective, the crux of very possibly true. There exists two lives. No, the airplanes aren't nearly as bad as, as car travel is. One before. Well, I don't even drive when I'm at home. And one behind the eye. Jesus Christ. Lots of news here at Gamescom. All right, let's talk about Xbox and Age of Empires 4 that continues to expand. Now we have news on the next civilizations joining the battle as free DLC. If you want to learn more about what's happening with Age of Empires 4, tune into the Xbox booth stream for developer interviews on Thursday. But right now, here's that announcement from Age of Empires 4. There's more than one way to win a battle, and every empire must find their own path to victory. Whether you strike from afar or ambush up close, the Malians will use wit and strategy to outmaneuver their opponents and gain the advantage on the battlefield. I mean, all right, for, for the average citizen, there's little you can do on your own to make any With impact at all, and that's absolutely and true. The ability to rally large but it, there, the there are things the society could do collectively that their are their enemies' defenses. Is this gonna DMCA me? When the drums of war beat, how will you emerge victorious? History is in the making, and your place in it 
has just begun. Whatever. I'm gonna delete this VOD anyways. Game Pass! Time to head Be nice. to Gotham. You guys excited for Gotham Knights? I'm sure. I'm well, sure you don't some have to people wait long. It is coming this. this October, and Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin, and Red Hood are going to take over in Gotham Knights. You're probably wondering about the story. Who are the villains? Well, we've got a lot to share in this brand new trailer, and also some exciting news. The release date is going to be a little earlier than you expected. Check this out. Batgirl was canceled. Why do they have to cancel Batgirl? The movie was made. Just Jim release Gordon it. Never gave up on anything. That's why Gotham City is still here. Coco, hello. It's why I want to see Red Hood shoot someone. And I'm the most American while, superhero ever. Someday, like him, I'd have to work with you. Does he just murder people in the comics? Like, what does he do? I've seen plenty of criminals in my career, but HBO had a fully produced movie about Batgirl. Or Warner Brothers did, and they just decided to cancel it because they didn't like it. And they got tax credits for canceling it. Well, well, if it isn't Brat Girl. Gotham City is at her weakest. There's blood in the water. And the sharks are circling. They're all making their move. Play nice. Mr. Freeze looks cool. But we aren't going to give up. A storm has risen over Gotham. Nothing can stop it. Yo, Clayface! I love him! He's so cool. I need your help. Your skills. Your knowledge. You know what it's gonna play like. Your it's just like all this other Batman games. You got my back? Oh, boys! This biopic is based on a true story. My story. Soon, the world will feel the cold as I do. I got one last little surprise for you. to watch the show, Red Hood. Nah, I'm just here to kick your ass. Shoot him with the gun! Come on. Oh, my ass. Pretty good trailer, right? October 21st now for Gotham Knights. All right, now it's time to announce a brand new game from a new studio, the global announcement of the ambitious new adventure game developed by Everstone Games. It's called Where Winds Meet. And it's an interactive open world RPG featuring action, adventure, and martial arts set in a turbulent time in the Northern Song Dynasty. Whoa, 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 whoa. The combat looks really cool. Check out this announcement. Of There's Where a lot Winds of words. Meet. Was that green game? That was just an award for being eco-friendly. I think it's an MMO. She's sick. She's gotta throw up. Warframe is getting a sequel? Uh, I know, I know they're doing a lot in that studio. Oh, she got poisoned. That's unfortunate.
I want to see him punch someone. Is he walking in the air? This is not Chinese Neo, no. dropping it's not the stream <laughs> it's not the stream this is being rented on an xbox 360 okay be kind What do you mean you have no idea what this game is about? They just showed you everything you needed to know. I think it's great. You guys can kiss my ass. I'd play it. Say ni hao? Ni hao ma? Ni hui hua pu tang hua? Ma? Where wins meet? Again, so much new IP tonight. It's really cool. All right. Back when we started OML in 2019, a very special guest joined me here in person uh, to okay. close the show. And this year when I told you him would, that we were going to be back here live that. in person, he said, well, i got to take part in some way. Uh, so please uh, say hello to my good friend, Hideo Kojima. Mr. Kojima? Of course they brought Kojima. Hi, Kojima. Gamers, everyone. Kojima Hideo. え、僕は今ですね、え、ゲームの制作、え、ゲームの制作に取り組んでおります。今回は別のニュースのお知らせとなります。この度9月から、え、僕のポッドキャスト番組をスポティファイでなんと6000配信することになりました。おお。それでです
the metaverse. Great job, guys. This has a lot of potential. Hmm. <laughs> Couldn't we go a step beyond? Don't build that? You don't know that. You'll never get a Spore 2, but you might get a Spore Remake. What about you? Will you go beyond your imagination? Talk beyond. Coming soon. So much fun. I love the diversity of games we have here. Amusement Park, I love Theme Park back in the day. Great to see that's coming out uh, from Limbic and Bandai Namco. All right, now it's time to share another special announcement here at Gamescom. Not a game, but a concept car. That's right, it's here at Gamescom, and I what? got to catch up with Oliver Heimer, the head of Mini No, Design. I love this. Let's check it out. The Ace Man? I'm over here at the mini booth with what? Oliver. This is the mini concept Ace Man reveal. This looks so cool. I'm glad you like it. Well, let's take a look and learn more in this trailer. I want the Ace Man. What does this mean? Why is there Pokemon? What? Huh? What does it oh, mean? Oh, this looks so cool. I have so many questions for you, Oliver. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you about this partnership, uh, a car with gaming features and Pokemon. How did this come That's together? That's a terrible idea. Yeah, Do not put all, gaming features Gamescom. in a car. You know, yeah. Gamescom is um, one of the core events of uh, femdom pop culture. And as we ourselves are a part of that pop culture, we don't want to miss out such a great event. And the Pokemon Company International, and we have a lot in common. We're both iconic brands. <laughs> By the gaming And Mini is more than a car. It's a character. You partner to explore the world. And the world of Pokemon is full of unique characters with like special Does it, like, work powers. with Pokemon Go? So we share a love for distinctive design and strong values. Well, I'm going to ask you your favorite Pokemon in a minute. But Freaky. first, <laughs> I want to ask about the gaming features. We saw a little bit in the trailer. Tell us, break it down. Why does this appeal to gamers? So... First of all, it's all about the Ace Man's gaming features. It's designed to be playful as the brand is. The Pokemon mode welcomes you inside of the car, and then you can connect <laughs> your gaming console to your Mini. No! And all you No, do not put a console in the Mini! referencing Pikachu in particular. Yeah. The Ace Man is fully electric, just like Pikachu ah. is an electric type. So they're a perfect match. Uh, is there an overarching motto to this partnership? So indeed, there it is. Um, we ask ourselves the question, <laughs> what is if a car could connect it with your gaming console, just like it does with your uh, smartphone? So we are promoting a playful mindset, just like our brand and Pokemon. So our Gamescom claim yes. is play on. No. Never stop playing. Don't. Well, speaking of never stop Don't playing. Don't play we'll video games while you're trying. As well? <laughs> yeah, we plan to stay in the game and play on for sure. Like we always have from the get-go. So stay tuned. Awesome. All right, Oliver, thank you so much. Ask him his favorite Pokemon. Still to come. You said you were going to ask him, you liar. Dark it's going to be amazing. It's a first-person co-op game set in the grim, dark future of Warhammer 40,000. Welcome to Tertium, a sprawling hive city on the brink of destruction. You are a reject, a convict free to serve the Inquisition in this darkest of hours. It is your duty to fight and, if necessary, die for the Emperor. You can expect no help. No reinforcements. 
You played this? How was it? Last line of defense. Uh, I played Vermintide. I played a Warhammer 40k uh, game that was similar to this, but not as good as this. It looks like they really lit it up. Like, I know it's supposed to be dark, but the first trailer, like, you couldn't see anything. So I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm happy with what I see. Once upon a time, there were two twin sisters, Zora and Yaga. You got it all wrong. What? Once upon a time, there was a freak with no face. Stop it! You can't hide from Baba, Princess. I'm... How much longer you want to be a nobody? I just need to find the Red Oak. What you really want to find is... The Hunt. What the hell is wrong with this forest? <sighs> Not bad. You kill it. You kill it again. <laughs> Always head straight to the red oak. I just think some of the particle effects need to be worked on. Let's consider well, whatever. Which option is the sexy witch? They're all sexy witches. Red Bull gives you wings. I mean, Enigma, I mean, we've got at least two more big title updates, right? It is time for a final award, but don't worry, there is more on Saturday, so make sure to not miss our award show on Saturday. But here are your nominees for the most wanted Sony PlayStation game. The Dark Pictures, The Devil in Me. Lies of P. It's gonna be the Dark Pictures one. one they paid the most Odyssey. money. Probably Dark Pictures. And the winner is... It should be Lies of P. Though. Lies of P! Oh, it is Lies of P! Oh my god, okay, never mind. Here to accept the award is... I'm so Dean happy. Choi ...project director at NeoWiz. The stage is yours. Oh, thank you. Um, first of all, I'm very proud of my team members. And uh, we always do our best to live up to the, our team's name enough. And finally, do you know BTS? <laughs> like BTS in Korean pop, and we'll be done enough in the Korean gaming industry. Thank you. 감사합니다.
Thank you. Congratulations once again to Liza P. Thank you so much. And yes, that's it from me too for tonight. But before I say goodbye, I want to bring your attention to a more serious matter. The past five months of war have been devastating for the Ukrainian families, and UNICEF and partners on the ground are supporting those in need. And of course, funds are needed. So please consider donating at unicef.org if it's possible. And um, yes, we have to take care of each other. Gamescom also supports the development of Antura, the language learning uh, game for Ukrainian <laughs> children. Antura is based on an app w which Politics was made for uh, Syrian war I don't know, man. The, the war is the local, like uh, language. making things expensive, and, man. I mean, in times like this, it is more important than ever to take care of each other. And I hope you keep that in mind, not only for Gamescom this week, but way after. Thank you so much. I think that's it's okay it to be like, and have a war is Gamescom. bad. Like, I don't think that's Death. like... Back to you. That's Thank not like you, a Mallory. political take. Great that's to just have being you with like, us. We got a few Maybe more games to go. Wars. Now, one of the great things about Gamescom is we love to profile games made in Germany. And this next game was made by four students in Berlin. It was a big uh, success on Steam. And now it's coming to a new platform. And we've got the announcement right now. I mean, politics is like... How much should we have as tariffs? <laughs> should we build more highways? I would not necessarily... Con I mean, obviously, there are politics involved with war. Um, but I, I'd say it's a pr pretty clear issue. We got, like, what, five minutes left? Cute, beautiful, now left. we're gonna get dark. The Outlast Trials. You guys excited for this game? The Outlast Trials we showed you last year at Gamescom Open Night Live, and we haven't heard anything since really from the team, and everyone keeps asking me, when are we gonna get to play this? Well, tonight, we've got the world premiere of the brand new trailer, and yes, some news on when you might get to play it. <laughs> Here we go. Is it just a single player game again? Of Nothing special yet? I mean, you missed the whole conference, so I, I'm not gonna like win down the whole thing. There was some good stuff. Look at that guy just sitting down in that chair, like, willingly. What is your problem, guy? Look at that pretty face. Looks like it's not a hundred percent walking scene. Show a big bloody like mouth gape. Greater emphasis upon the experience of personal rebirth. The chef went out to the pet and it blocked out the red bar and put it blocked out. Political criminals are subjected to a literally fatal dispensing of existence by the promise of execution. That's right, some people will get to play something this year, The Outlast Trials. All right, next up we've got a tease of the first release from Embark Studios, which a lot of the veterans that worked on the Battlefield franchise in Stockholm, Sweden. They've got a shooter wrapped in a game show format where destruction is going to play a key role. What we've got here is a short tease with some actual gameplay in it. The full reveal is coming later in September. You can sign up uh, starting now to get in to start play tests of this. Check out the finals. Ow, 
my ears! Ow! <laughs> it's too loud. All right. We got one more game for you tonight at Gamescom opening night live. And this is one we've all been waiting. Yeah, next on not, not a good sign. Time for. Here we go. Is that the MCA? No way. It could be GTA. I mean, definitely zombie game, right? I don't understand, though. Is the Dead Island people not the same people that made Dying Light? I'm so confused. My summer home. Thank you. I will buy some horse tonight with them. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. I mean, it's a nice CGI trailer. I would have liked to see, like... I mean, it's coming that soon. Like, you think you'd want to see some gameplay. It's true. Dead Island 2 coming next February. And joining me now to tell us about this long-awaited game is Khan. Khan, great to, uh, to have you with us. Uh, first of all, let's explain a little context to that trailer we saw. Who is that character that we meet? Thank you, Jeff. It's great to be here. Uh, so you just met Jacob, and he is just one of our six playable characters. Our zombie slayers have larger-than-life personalities and unique dialogue, which fits in with a very pulpy and irreverent tone, as you could tell. Uh, I see the tagline there, uh, see you in hell A, so it looks like we're heading to, uh, to Los Angeles in this game? Well, uh, our pulpy tone is kind of a love letter to classic cult Hollywood horror B-movies, so where better to Should set know, it than in Los Angeles? Should I know uh, what so Hell A is? Modern Paradise gone Oh, Hell A. Okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, uh, it looks, uh, looks cool. <laughs> it's obviously over the top. Uh, I know you're working on the narrative for it. Uh, this game has been, you know, long awaited for many, many years. You guys have been working on it for a few? I get it. I get it. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. agree with you. I it has been it. long awaited, but uh, Deep Silver Dam Buster Studios started work on it about four years ago. We were really lucky. We got to build it from the ground up. We got to focus on what we love about the franchise, the over-the-topness, and um, we think we've got a really great action RPG out of that. 
Uh, so let's talk about the gameplay. We saw the CG piece, obviously, but what can we expect from the gameplay when you show it? <laughs> is it so an Dead Island, Island 2's gameplay is all about that is a very with your valid preferred complaint. zombie slaying methods. Just kind of going nuts. It's a combat toy box of close quarters melee brutality with a few guns for fun. Okay, well, I uh, can't wait to learn more. When are we going to get to see more, uh, see some gameplay of it? You want to see some gameplay? I well, think we want to see some gameplay. You guys want to see the gameplay? Can we do it now? How about now? Okay, let's okay. do it. Here's your first look at the gameplay of that. Dead Island 2. Thanks, Con. I like how like, the, little, the little pigs in the audience like, yes, oink, oink, feed me my gameplay. I'm the same way as, as them, by the way. I mean, it looks okay. I mean, you know, it, we're definitely starting to look bad. more and more whatever the hell next gen is. This way for the happy ending. Jimmy. Dead Island 1 did suck. Yes. Dying Light was good. Humanity's survival depends on the red gold pumping through my veins. Oh. Sounds like you're the star of the show now. This motherfucker! Oh, shit. Boom! Gods are whiskey! <laughs> I will not have this devil in my house! This is beyond insane. Well, it's being broadcast in Germany, so they might have to censor some of it. Assume Germany was like, no. And believe it or not, there is an uncut version of that trailer you can watch online if you want to see even more. All right, well, that's Dead Island 2 coming in February, and that is going to no, if you've wrap seen up Dying all the reveals Light, for Gamescom opening uh, night live I mean, 2022. Dead, Dead Island already existed. Uh, it's been a fun show, but before we go, and it looks very I just want to say I hope everyone has a great Gamescom. Uh, there's lots of live streams. The next couple of all right, lots of things I'm leaving. Go I got to get my second floor. dinner. It's already 10 o'clock. See you tomorrow. Final stream tomorrow until I get back on Thursday, December on Saturday. See ya. Goodbye.